Measurement of electrolytes by ion selective electrodes method. The determination of electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and chloride, is one of the most important functions in a clinical laboratory. Electrolytes affect most metabolic processes. They serve to maintain osmotic pressure and hydration of various body fluid compartments, proper body pH, and regulation of appropriate heart and muscle functions. Iron selective electrodes are used in clinical chemistry to measure concentration of ions like sodium, potassium, chloride, and calcium in blood, serum, plasma, cerebrospinal fluid, and urine. Principle An iron selective electrode, also known as a specific iron electrode, is a transducer or sensor that converts the activity of a specific ion dissolved in a solution into an electric potential. A pH selective glass electrode is immersed into the solution whose ion concentration is to be measured. When the ion selective electrode is immersed into the solution, a potential difference develops between the inner and outer layers of the membrane of the electrode which is related to the ionic concentrations of the solution. The voltage is theoretically dependent on the logarithm of ionic activity according to the Nernst equation. Parts of an electrolyte analyzer There are various electrolyte analyzers available in the market from different manufacturers. The following parts are common to most analyzers. Removable reagent pack Display screen and keyboard Sample probe Sensors or electrodes such as sodium sensor, potassium sensor, chloride sensor, spacer sensor and reference sensor. Peristaltic pump and tubing The reagent pack and the sensors are replaceable components of the instrument. Spares for both should always be kept as a backup as both are critical for running the samples. Reagent exhaustion or expiry and electrode failure will immediately terminate the operation. Hence, to ensure smooth functioning, always keep these components in backup. Reagent pack or module The reagent pack is a rectangular box which stores the reagents in the lower half and the waste is generated in the upper half. The left side of the pack has three inlets for the reagent tubes on the main body of the analyzer and also one inlet for the waste generated. Two types of reagent packs are commonly available. One with reagents for sodium, potassium and chloride and the other with reagents for sodium, potassium and lithium. To load a new reagent pack, Choose the replacement components mode from the user menu. Place the pack in front of the analyzer. Push the module straight back, then firmly to the right to lock it into the place, against the valve module, till you hear a click sound. At this point, the guide arrow should be to the right of the bead on the reagent pack. This method may differ in machines from different manufacturers. Instrument maintenance. The analyzer requires a daily maintenance of cleaning the fluid path to remove protein deposits. Cleaning is performed with the cleaning solution provided by the manufacturer. This is to be performed daily at the beginning of the day before the samples are run. Take the cleaning solution in a clean container to avoid contamination of the remaining solution. Run the cleaning solution like a sample, but in the daily cleaner mode. The cleaning cycle will be completed in 75 seconds. After cleaning, calibration is required before samples can be analysed. This instrument performs an automatic calibration and is then ready to analyse samples. Replacement Schedule The following schedule should be followed. Out of these, Pump tubing, sensors, reagent and printer paper can be done by the technician. 
The rest should only be performed by the service person or engineer. Replacement of pump tubing. Replace the pump tubing every six months or earlier if the pump tubing appears worn or flattened. The method is described for this particular machine. It may differ in machines from different manufacturers. Perform the action under replacement component mode. Fluid will be automatically purged from the sample flow path. When the purge cycle is complete, proceed with tubing replacement. Carefully remove the tube beginning from the collar on the left and then now remove the tube from around the pump and then the collar on the right. The pump tube has a large collar on one end and a small collar on the other. Fix the large collar first, then fix it through the groove in the pump shelf. Bring it around the pump, then through the groove of the pump shelf again and finally fix the small collar. Reagents will be automatically primed from the reagent module. It is necessary to recalibrate when replacement is complete. Replacement of sensors or electrodes. Repeated protein coating of the ion selective membranes, contamination of the membrane, salt bridge formation by ions can all alter electron response. These necessitate periodic changes of the membrane as part of the routine maintenance. The sensors should be considered for replacement if there is a repetitive failure of calibrations or quality controls. The sensors are basically electrodes immersed in a fluid. The method is described for this particular machine. It may differ in machines from different manufacturers. Sensors should be removed in the replacement mode. Fluid is automatically purged from the sample flow path. When the purge cycle is complete, proceed with sensor replacement. To remove a sensor, push the compression plate down until the latch locks into the open position. Grip the desired sensor handle, squeeze and pull it straight out from the sensor module. To install a new sensor, push the sensor gently into its designated slot till the handle snaps into the sensor module. Do not force. Recalibrate when replacement is complete. Quality controls should be analyzed after any component replacement. Calibration. This instrument is set for two-point auto calibration every eight hours by the manufacturer. It may differ for machines from different manufacturers. Assessing calibration. The calibration performed by the machine is assessed by obtaining calibration values for each sensor. These values should be within acceptable ranges which are defined by the manufacturer. Check these values daily and document. Acceptable ranges should be displayed as a bench aid near the equipment to give ready reference to its performance. If the acceptance criteria are breached, perform maintenance as per manufacturer's instructions. Few causes of calibration failure are Sensor or electrode failure, reagent expiry, air bubbles in the probe. After calibration and prior to patient sample analysis, quality control must be analyzed to establish the equipment's performance. Quality control. As with all clinical instrumentation, the performance of this analyzer must be monitored using quality control. Each lot of analyzer control material contains an insert sheet indicating the expected ranges for each analyte. Each laboratory should establish their own quality control program. As part of a good quality control program, each laboratory should establish their own ranges for each lot of controls. These ranges should be calculated from results collected over multiple days. This analyzer stores quality control results for three levels, a maximum of 31 for each level. The results for each analyte are compared to the quality control reference limits previously entered for the chosen level of quality control.
Samples All standard precautions need to be followed while handling samples. Serum or plasma free from hemolysis is a recommended specimen. Separate serum from red blood cells as soon as possible. Pre-analytical errors can occur due to the following reasons. Hemolysis. If the sample is hemolyzed, an increase of 0.6% in potassium with every 10 mg per deciliter of hemoglobin concentration can be expected. Thus, slight hemolysis, approximately 50 mg hemoglobin per deciliter, can raise the value by 3%. Moderate hemolysis, approximately 200 mg hemoglobin per deciliter, can raise the value by 12%. Marked hemolysis, that is, greater than 500 mg hemoglobin per deciliter, can raise the value by 30%. Storage, time and temperature. Potassium increases in serum by 0.2 millimoles per litre in 1.5 hours at 25 degrees centigrade. At 4 degrees centigrade, the increase is considerably greater, up to 2 millimoles per litre, Increase can happen in serum in 4 hours at 4 degrees centigrade. In unseparated samples stored at 37 degrees centigrade, the reverse can happen because of glycolysis. A biphasic phenomena, an initial decrease followed by increased values, can happen in the event of leukocytosis. Skeletal muscle activity causes potassium efflux, elevating potassium values. Special care should be taken to loosen the tunicae before sample draw. Patient should not clench and unclench the fist repeatedly. Use fresh sample for analysis when possible. Store the samples in a stoppered tube if analysis is delayed as evaporation from serum can lead to erroneous results. Urine samples can also be processed. Refrigerate urine specimens until time of analysis. Centrifuge urine specimens to remove cellular matter, crystals, etc. Dilute the urine specimen by transferring one part of the supernatant to nine parts of urine diluent. Urine must be diluted. Do not attempt to analyze undiluted urine samples. Errors in dilution will cause inaccurate analysis results. Expected values. The values shown here are intended to be used only as a guide. Each laboratory should establish their own range of normal values, taking into account factors such as age, sex, diet and other determinants of electrolyte levels. Whole blood, serum, plasma. Sodium, 136 to 146 millimoles per litre. Potassium, 3.5 to 5.1 millimoles per litre in serum and 3.4 to 4.5 millimoles per litre in plasma and whole blood. Chloride, 98 to 106 millimoles per litre. Urine, sodium, 40 to 220 millimoles per litre. Potassium, 25 to 125 millimoles per litre. Chloride, 110 to 250 millimoles per litre. In this instrument, samples can be run in two different modes. Sample container mode is to analyse samples from collection tubes, sample cups or syringes. Capillary mode to analyse samples from capillary tubes. Capillary tubes must have an outer diameter between 0.059 and 0 0.065 and a minimum sample capacity of 55 microliters. Some special instructions. Samples containing particulate matter should be centrifuged and the material removed before analysis. Grossly lipemic specimens should be cleared by ultracentrifugation. Pseudohyponatremia may be seen with lipemic specimens as a result of fluid displacement. Separate serum immediately after centrifugation. Potassium from the red cells will diffuse into the serum, giving falsely elevated results. 
Hemolysis shows no significant interference to sodium or chloride. Turbid urine samples should be cleared by centrifugation. In very rare cases, gammopathy, in particular type IgM gammopathy, may cause unreliable results.